Hey guys, welcome back to Jerry's Live. I'm your host as always, Amy Gardner-Dean. We are on episode JL92, eight more until the big 100, Katie. Holy cow. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Oh, and I talked to Ophelia today, so maybe we can do something like crazy wacky. Just plans, diabolical evil plans, but yes, we, we are going to make sure it's something very fun and entertaining to watch for JL100 when we get there. Today we are going over water mixable oils, an introduction to solvent-free painting. Uh, we did last year at the beginning of the year, the first or second episode I think into the year, uh, with JL41 had an episode that went over all of the brands of water mixable oils. We explained very much in detail what are water mixable oils? What makes them different from regular oil paints? We're gonna kind of review that a little bit today, but we're not going to discuss the other brands. So if you've got questions about those, I would definitely say please refer to JL41. The gals are going to put a link on there for you guys, uh, either pinned to the top of the page or somewhere in the comments where you'll be able to go to that and review it at a later time. Um, in that episode, we don't actually use them. Today, we're going to get into using some of them uh, just to kind of learn some tips and tricks of what are the best things to do with water mixable oils. Just because they're water mixable doesn't mean that you just only want to use water to paint with them. So we'll talk about all of that stuff in the episode. So um, we can go ahead and we'll do a quick rundown here of the products that we're going to be showing you today, just so you know what it is we're using and kind of to burn a touch of time while people are kind of logging on and trying to get on the show with us. Um, for the main set of, of paints we're going to use, uh, Lucas has the Berlin water mixable oils. Lucas is one of our many house brands. So it's a easy kind of way to show you something that's actually a, a fantastic start, starter set so that if you've always kind of wanted to try oils, or you have had oils before, but you've stopped using them because of the solvent, this is like the perfect way to get started back in it without investing a lot of money. This entire kit is only $47.99, guys, which when you see what's in it is gonna be kind of a really nice little surprise package. Let's say that you maybe are a watercolorist or you do other types of art, other genres, but you've always been interested in oils. This set comes with this a little box, a little handle to it. Okay, I'm gonna open it up if you wanna zoom in to see all the exciting items in the set. So it's actually an easel box. It's got hinges uh, with wing nuts. It comes with three panels that have canvas on them. Um, there's a nice portable little panel. It's got three brushes that are, it looks like chunking hog brushes that are actually cut a little bit shorter so that they fit in the box for travel. So you've got uh, three different sizes for that. Comes with a palette knife. It comes with a set of, let's see, I wanna say it's 10, 10. Yep, 10, 20 milliliter tubes of paint, which this is what we'll be using We always getting them out. I'm never it's gonna. Baby. Well, I put them. I put them back in last night because I actually used this set. We'll show you an example that I used this with last night. So it's it's got ten colors. It does not have black, but you if, as we've talked about color, right, Katie? They've mm -hmm. probably learned by now. You can make a chromatic black uh, with this set. I was able to make it two different ways: the ultramarine blue with the burnt umber, and then also the viridian. And there is a alizarin crimson hue that actually made a decent black too. It was just um, more transparent. So, got that. It actually has a hardwood palette in the thing. So it's, yeah, it's like the perfect height. But it fits in the box. It all fits in the box. It's so cute. And then there's directions. Gotta love the Germans. They. They give directions with it. There is actually this little rack that you can bolt through the back, prop the box up, tighten the wing nuts, Katie, and you've got a little easel box that you can actually use. So you don't even need an easel if you're just starting out with oils. 
This will give you a stable little platform to do your painting on or to take it to work. I mean, I put it on my coffee table. You put it on your coffee? Yeah, that's perfect. But I mean, a lunch at the lunch, you know, your table at work in the lunchroom or something like that. I mean, this would be the perfect set to be able to do that with. So I'm gonna leave those paints out there. Go ahead and put the rest of the stuff in this little box so it doesn't all get separated from itself. So, but I mean, all of that, 10 colors and all of that for $47.99. I mean, three little panels included. So you've got everything that you would need immediately to be able to paint. Now, um, let's, we all good? Okay, let's look at um, mediums that we'll be using with this today. Put these down here. When you're actually using the water mixable oils, you're going to want to use mediums that have been modified to be used with the water mixable oils. All the brands make their own different types of mediums. We've got medium three for Lucas. It is the quick drying medium. So it's easy to see on the shelf between the two. It's white, it looks, it looks like whole milk, right? That's how you remember that it's the quick dry medium. It dries very quickly. I think the first time I ever used it, within an hour I could paint over the thing. It was dry to the touch. Um, it was working in the summer, but still that's pretty crazy. Uh, and then this is the modified linseed oil. So it's essentially just the oil that you've got in the color itself that's been modified to be able to clean out of your brushes with water. So we'll be using those today. Palette cups are the perfect thing to put that in. It's got a little thing on the back, it clips to your palette. You could use your fast dry and your regular oil medium there if you wanted. I would suggest uh, with the fast dry, only put out a little at a time because it does what? Dries fast. Dries fast. So, so that's something that, you know, only put out what you need at the time that you need it. So we'll be using a palette cups. Um, for palette knives, I've just got, um, it's a set of Creative Mark palette knives. It's actually the uh, Collection 5B. I like those shapes. This is a nice, easy shape to spread paint, so we'll use that. This is easy to scrape stuff up, so I think Mikey and I agree that we both like this. And then the one with the little hook, that's kind of like that. That doesn't come in a set. We probably have a bunch of them around here, and Mike's got them hoarded somewhere. He does. <laughs> now they're over on the other side. Yeah. So um, then what we're going to be using with them are we've got the Mimic uh, Hog synthetic hog bristle brushes. Um, the nice thing about these, unlike a regular traditional um, oil brush, which we'll show this later, traditional oil brush that's got your regular natural hair hog bristle, slightly softer. The issue with this is, you know how when you get your hair wet and it kind of poofs out, it gives it a, just that little bit of body? Okay, Frida doesn't have enough hair to know this. Everyone else sitting here that I'm looking at does. This is going to pull water up into it and suddenly the end is going to be swollen. It's not going to have that nice compact head that it would just have with the oil and the paint inside of it because you've now got water up in that as well. These are synthetic. They're not going to absorb a bunch of water in the actual fiber of the hair itself. So that's you can wet the brush down without uh, making the brush swell and act unwieldy and be very difficult to keep that nice tight edge and line on the brush that the brush has in it. So this is synthetic hog so it's gonna perform like a natural hair hog but give you that better performance with the water mixable oils. And you know I, I'd forgotten all about this Katie and last night when I was working on the little paint example with the Lucas mm -hmm. I did not have any synthetic hog bristle brushes and got out natural ones. And I was like, why is this like, I can't get a line with this. And, and filberts that I can get like a razor sharp line. When I'm using solvents and traditional oils, it was a, it was like I was had finger, little fat kindergarten fingers and was painting with those. So I, I realized that I needed to remind people that that was something to stay away from with the water mixable oils. All right, and then the other brushes that we're going to be using are the set of Mimic Kalinsky. These are a synthetic Kalinsky, so they're not natural hair, red, sable Kalinsky hair. 
They are going to perform like it though, so you're gonna get really nice tight lines, you're gonna be able to do glazing, things like that, that you would not want to do with traditional oils and damage the natural hair in your brush, and it's not going to swell with the water in that water mixable paint. Okay, so we will be using those as we go along today. Uh, that Mimic Hog Value set of 11 is only $31.49 for that many brushes. So 11 brushes for just a little over $30. That's like pretty much, you know, a nice full set if you're getting started as well. Uh, then we've got the, we're going to be using um, Centurion Universal Primed Linen Panels. Now this is another thing that I'm going to caution you with, with the, uh, water mixable oils and it's something that I've actually seen on some other websites too so it's not just me being like overprotective and be saying you now now I want you to have the most archival layering possible right because don't I do that Katie a lot all the time yeah yeah a lot lecture finger. yes yes I get the lecturing finger out so if you're going to use a lot of water and introduce that in with your paint when you're doing your lower layers, you want it to be on a universal primed linen painting panel. That is an acrylic gesso base. It's more absorbent, right, than a regular oil primed base. Because oil priming is designed to do what? It's designed for the oil to sit up on the surface, correct? So if we're adding water to that, and then we're putting that on, you're making it so it's not a stable bond. It's not that you can't do oil priming, and by all means, if you've got oil, oil prime surfaces, use them. If you're wanting to use water mixable oils though, what you're going to want to do is not add water for your layers. You're gonna to wanna to start out with a painting medium because that's going to make that oil to oil bond so that you're not going to have issues. Washing the brushes out with water is not going to damage that oil prime surface or have any problems with the layers. Just blot out the excess water before you put it back in the water mixable paint and the water mixable mediums and it will be fine, okay? But if you're going to want to thin it down with water, maybe you're just starting out, you bought that kit, you forgot to get the mediums, you can still thin it with water, just make sure you're using acrylic primed surfaces, okay? Because they're thirstier. Gonna provide a better bond. All right, then um, I've got um, the Chelsea Classical Studios, the Lavender and Olive Oil Brush Soap. This is a fantastic cake of soap. It's a little pricey if you're just buying brush soap, but this thing will last. I actually found another one, Katie, in here rather than the big scary one that was in my office. Yeah. There's a paper towel stuck in it and it was grossing Katie out. So yeah, it makes me a little gross. I have to look, not look at that side. It's a weird thing. I don't know why it did, but- It's because I've got to carry a wet, I don't yeah. have water in my office, so I have to carry a wet cake of soap back and it gets all slippery and gross. So I put like a towel on it set it on it and then sometimes the towel doesn't come off. So I found another one that we've had in here for like three years now. This is one of the original ones that we actually did the video, or not the videos, the um, the pictures for, for the website. This cake of soap has been around that long, Katie. You can see there's a divot in it. Yeah. But I mean, it's been around that long with as much as we've it got brushes forever. being used in here. It lasts forever. So you will have it for forever. So that's not a bad deal. It's got natural oils in it. It's going to work down in those bristles. Just because a paint's water mixable doesn't mean you can just use water and then the brushes are fine. They're going to have residue in them. So you're still going to need a decent brush soap. Also, I found over <laughs> in a bin, um, some people love the Masters brush soap. It's just like a cake, but in a jar, so it doesn't get your hands all gooky. Same thing. You wouldn't need a paper towel for that. You wouldn't need a paper towel for that, but I don't like how it smells and um, I don't think it works as nice. So, there. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, just maybe I'm a snope sob. Snope sob. Soap Yikes. snob. Say that three times mm -hmm. fast. Um, okay, so, uh, and then uh, the Soho Studio wipes, just so we can blot out excess paint uh, when we go to. You always want to, before you take. And you know, um, when I taught at the Art of the Carolinas workshop, I don't know how many people I saw taking their brush, either loaded up with acrylic paint or oil paint, not wiping out the excess before they stick it in their solvent cup or their, you know, their water, 
because that suddenly puts a whole lot of pigment and a whole lot of paint in your, you know, brush washing area. So it's always good to have paper towels, it's good to have old t-shirt rags, studio wipes, something to wipe that excess off so there's limited amounts of your paint and solvent uh, in your solvent or water cup, okay? All right, so, all right, so what actually, in a nutshell, are water mixable oils? Um, Everybody knows the olive oil and vinegar, right? If you put them together in the bottle and try to make it where it's not just separate, you shake it up, disperses like a little. Once that shaking stops, you see the obvious immediate separation, right? The oil rises up to the top in the vinegar. That's not what water mixable oils are. And people always think water and oil, that's what's going to happen. How do they prevent that from being the case? And just, just because, you know, and, the, and people will say that when they get oils, right, Katie, and there's a little bit of separation because pigments absorb oil in different separations. Don't think that with the water mixable oils, if you get it and it's got that little bit of stuff at the top that needs to be burped, that's that liquid, that's not your water mixable oil separating. Totally good, it's totally fine. Um, what they're putting in water mixable oils, that's not like traditional oils, is they're putting an emulsifier in, okay? or they're actually modifying the oil itself that's in that paint so that it can actually kind of chemically change it, right? An emulsifier is something that if you, let's say this is our little emulsifier, right? The head of the emulsifier here where the brush bristle head would be is loves water, right? It's just so water happy. The tail, loves oil. So what they do is they put that emulsifier in, this part bonds with the water, this part bonds with the oil, so there will be these glob little globules, little tiny globules that you can't see with the naked eye, that then separate out as all these little emulsifiers stick in with the water and oil bits that make it so you can, with adding water, you can actually break that up and make it into a smoother paste, right? But when that dries, what happens? Water evaporates where the oil and the you know pigment are, bonds together just like it's supposed to, and you have the same thing in equivalent as a traditional oil painting, right? Everybody's always like, well, but it's not oil, so it's gotta have different varnish, it's gotta have this. It is oil. All that's been done is that emulsifier has been added to the traditional oil, or the oil in the paint itself has been modified to be able to kind of disperse just like that, just slightly, but then dry back together, okay? Does that make sense? Basically, it's just stabilized, it, it reduces the surface tension so that it becomes spreadable and then it knits itself and bonds back together, okay? Okay, so now everybody's always like, okay, so is that same per brand? And sometimes people use the word surfactant, that's actually what I use. Don't freak out. Somebody didn't go dump Tide into your oil paint. <laughs> a surfactant is just a fancy word for emulsifier. That's all that is. An emulsifier is breaking up. That's how stains break up in the laundry, right? And stink breaks up in the laundry. It's bonding to those emulsifiers and getting pulled out of the clothes with the water, right? So um, some brands like Holbein, Holbein modifies the oil only. They, I think they are the one true brand that all they do is actually modify that linseed oil that's in the paint and that's how it becomes water mixable. Most of the other brands either modify a fatty acid molecule or they actually add an emulsifier or they do both. Everybody's very secretive about it, right, Katie? Is there any way to like, nobody's brand page says, so hey, let us tell you how this is done. Yeah. They're like, it's magic. Great secret. Yeah, when they don't even usually say that. They're just like, oh yeah, it's water mixable. Water mixable. So it's not, it's, you have to, I think that Holbein's the only one of the ones that I've ever found, like, and it wasn't even on their website. <coughs> it was on a brochure that they send to vendors <laughs> that I had here that's like a 300 page catalog um, where it goes more in depth. So that's the only reason that I'm aware of that, because I just happened to look at that catalog. 
All you need to know is that it works. Are all brands as successful as each other? No, they're not. Just like regular traditional oil paints, there are all sorts of levels everywhere from beginner to professional grade that you may just have to kind of try out yourself. Um, so, and the other thing is, <laughs> unlike traditional oils, in my opinion, I don't feel like all the brands play together nicely. You can mix traditional oils in with water mixable oils, but you need to, usually most brands will say 20%, some say as much as 30% traditional oil can be added. Always err on the side of caution. I don't think I'd go beyond 20% because you don't know with the brand you're using of water mixable and then the brand you're using with regular oils how easy that's going to be to get out of your brushes later and then what's going to happen you're going to need solvent to get it out of your brush okay so i would always err on only the 20 percent um so that's the the kicker and and again as is the brands mix together some brands do well others don't if you've got one brand and you're wanting to try another brand Buy a color that's really cheap, that you really like, like something basic like Burn Umber or white or black that you already know the performance is on, something that you use a lot of, So, but something that, oh my gosh, you didn't order some like really exotic color you've always wanted, you get it in, you've got a commission that you need that for that's due in two weeks, and then you find that that paint absolutely does not work with your brand. Just try something out that's a safe, kind of the bottom rung of the of the price range of the paint. If it doesn't work with your oils, give it to somebody, throw in the garbage, whatever, but you aren't out a whole bunch of pocket change, right? Okay, so now we're gonna look at the two paintings <coughs> that I've done. Now, we did an oil episode last year, I wanna say end of the summer, Katie, maybe, right? Where we did the oil episode. Okay, so one of these paintings, if you can switch to the little tiny thing. One of these paintings, and, and there may be something to give it away, huh? Wait till you put them both up. Okay. Is done with a traditional oil paint. One of these paintings is done with that same set, those actual tubes of the Lucas Berlin water mixable oil. The set that was done with the traditional oil was actually a really strange, freaky set. Williamsburg Signature Colors set of nine. It's cool colors. They were cool colors that made no sense other than you got their cool colors that they yeah. had these blends of on their own that were like, what the heck am I gonna do to paint something with that? They special. Yeah, well, so what we did was we talked about color theory, right? So the color theory was the triadic color scheme. We've got red, yellow, and blue going on in here, right? So which one is the is which? One's just using traditional colors that Lucas has to make something very similar to those crazy colors. Is anybody ringing in? There's probably enough of it's a delay like a where. It's 25 seconds of delay. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's just go with this. The frame kind of gives it away right. because yeah. obviously something done last night is not going to be able to be dry enough to be framed. Or varnished. Yes. So yeah, you can see the the varnish shine right there, right? Okay. So this is actually the one done with Berlin, but look how close that I'm able to get those colors to each other. And actually this could have been made peachier in here. Some of these parts that are a little peachier, but because this only had like two things that were even kind of sort of red, I was like, look, I have reds to play with and it's an apple. So, um, so I got a little brighter in some of the areas with that because I really liked the color to it. But I mean, that's, Everybody's always so worried that water mixable oils really aren't the same. You can't get the same results, that it's not traditional. Um, I mean, you can see that, I'm going to hold it up, Katie, how much the, uh, sorry, is it 22? No, no, you're fine. I'm just hitting the wrong screen. No. Okay. You're fine. <laughs> okay. You can see how much um, texture that has, right? That's a lot of texture, and that's the water mixable oil. And that's just using a brush. You can see all of that texture that's on it. The same texture that's on this, it's just slightly less easy to see because this already has the varnish to it. Mm -hmm. 
but I mean you can get the exact same results with texture and everything else. If I walked up to those hanging on the wall, I would never be able to tell which is which. Mm -mm. Nope. Nope, and if anything, these colors are just slightly more subtle because they were the ones that Williamsburg has that they've tweaked to be specifically like this. You would almost assume that maybe it's the varnish making them just a little more antique colored. So, so anyway, all right, well, do we have any questions right now from, um, from this? And, and remember, we're not going to discuss the different brands. We've discussed that in the other episode. Yeah, so if anybody's, you know, Got questions on that? Refer to JL forty one. What makes water mixable oils different from acrylic? Okay. She wanted to know what what makes water mixable oils different from acrylic. Just because it's water mixable, we just covered that. It's an emulsifier that's added, right, to make it so that the traditional oil and pigment break up just slightly to be able to be spreadable, to, to be able to be thinned. Acrylic has acrylic resins in it as the vehicle. Different mediums are different. It could be the same pigment in acrylic. It can be the same pigment in oil. It can be the same pigment in watercolor. What makes them different is the binder for them, right? So water mixable oils and traditional oils have an oil binder. The only difference is that binder is modified to be able to have water introduced and not just turn into a big disgusting mess. Okay, acrylic, acrylic resin is the binder, watercolor gum arabic is the binder. So it's not something any different. You don't want to be mixing acrylics in with your water mixable paints and things like that because that's a totally different binder. This is still oil, it's still like traditional oil, you're just not getting to use, you don't have to have those solvents anymore. Okay, that, that, that necessity has been removed by that modification. All right, other questions? Um, is this Berlin, is it considered student or professional? Um, Berlin is, I mean, look at that. This is Williamsburg is the high end, right? Is, is up there like, like, um, like Old Holland, like Sennelier, like, you know, the higher end the, the extra fine Charvin, this is Berlin. What's the, I mean, it, you can get the same kind of color mixing from a very limited palette to colors that were, you know, I don't, didn't even have this other set, so I couldn't look at the pigment numbers to be like, okay, so that blue is, you know, cerulean, and that's a PB35, is that in this, you can get professional results with that. I mean, that's, that's awesome. <coughs> Any other questions? What about using thinning and fat oils? So you're talking about using traditional oil mediums right. with this. Like I said at the beginning when we we're talking about these mediums, when you're using water mixables, because what you're doing, you, you can use them. It's not that you can't. Let's say you've run out of these. It's, it's two in the morning and you're trying to beat a deadline. It's not to say that you can't use your traditional oil mediums. What do you need to use to clean up traditional oil mediums? Solvents, right? So yes, those can mix in with it. You could mix your traditional oil paint with it, but you're going to need to use solvents to get it out of your brushes, to get it you know, off of the palette, to do all those things because it's not been modified. So yes, it's not that you can't use it, it's just that then you're gonna be required to have solvents to do the cleanup. Another question, Amanda. Look like yeah. you had one. Um, how do galleries and or art collectors feel about water mixable oils versus regular oils? That's uh, it's a that's uh, how do collectors and galleries and things like that feel about water mixable oils? It's the same thing. Tell them it's an oil painting. You don't have to say that it's modified and it's water mixable because it's the same thing, right? It just has had that chemical modification. So it's going, as long as you're using archival things, like you should be using even with traditional oils, you're using archival panels or canvases, 
you're using good painting practices, just because this is water mixable, doesn't mean that fat over lean is still not important, doesn't mean that any of the fundamental painting techniques that you would need to employ with traditional oils just get thrown out the window because it's water mixable. That's not a free pass to you to just go hog wild. <laughs> so, so definitely, it should be viewed the exact same. Because you know what, even, even just because it's water mixable doesn't mean it's student grade. There's different galleries and stuff that will take house paint because they just will. Just tell them it's oil, it's oil. It doesn't have to be specified, right? Yes, do you have more? Um, yes. Okay. Can you glaze over water mixable oils with traditional oils? Yes. Um, when we're when we kind of do our practice with one and the other, we're going to talk about this in a few minutes. We're going to talk about the drawbacks, the benefits and the drawbacks of water mixable oils, and we'll do that while we're working. A lot of professional artists use water mixable oils because they dry up to 50% faster for their underpaintings, and then use traditional oils over the top. Okay, they're not using it because of of the I don't have to use solvents. They're using it because, hey, this is like my cheat sheet way of getting something down, getting it to dry quick so I can start going back over it with other things. So again, and that would be the perfect way of doing that, would be layering that and then putting it over. Remember, just because there's that emulsifier in it, once it's dry, folks, and gone, it, the surface is traditional oil paint. It's the same thing. Yes, Frida. Robert is asking, can you make glazes with just water instead of having to use mediums? Robert, it's one of those things where, and, and we're gonna show you, the more water you're adding, which a glaze is gonna require a lot more water, the more you're gonna have issues with it. There's only a point that water mixables can have water added, okay? Before it's gonna turn into goo, it's gonna be very messy and gross and all that. So it's just really better because a glaze is a suspension, right? A glaze, you're adding something like an oil, you're adding something with, with oils, you're adding something that's got something that's going to make it more translucent, right? But you still keep that suspension of pigment where it's nice and smooth and even. When you're adding too much water, you're still gonna have those clumps of pigment and oil it can only be thinned to a point. It's not like watercolor where it just gets thinned completely to pigment and then cements down, okay? So you definitely need to use a medium. Um, with that, this oil actually dries pretty quickly. I mean, I would touch that, but it was finished at like one in the morning. So I would imagine it's still gonna be tacky in some spots, but I couldn't believe from the first night that I worked on it to the second night that everything but one area was dry to the touch even with using some of the oil to thin it down. Yes, Amanda. <coughs> Do you varnish this? Second, what's the best to varnish with? Okay, this is all covered in the JL41. So even if I answer this question, if you're really interested in water mixable oils and you're serious about it, please go back and review that episode because we get into it like crazy in depth. It's an oil painting. It has to be varnished. You have to have that protection for the surface to not only seal it, from environmental dust and dirt and pollutants like smoke or, you know, your Aunt Kathy's fried chicken grease that's in there. What? That happens. If you have a small apartment, somebody <laughs> buys your work and it's, they hang it in the kitchen and they're really fond of burning food, where does that go? It goes somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. You want to varnish that painting. You want to varnish that painting. And because water mixable oils tend to be a little more matte by nature, you definitely want to varnish that painting to make sure that the sheen is even across the entire painting. Okay? It just looks better, it looks more professional, it's nicer, and it protects your artwork. Now, will a water mixable oil painted painting dry a lot faster to be able to put that final varnish on it? Yes. One like this, I, this was used with Gamsol, but otherwise I would have waited because of the thickness that I used for it. I would have waited probably nine months to even tr attempt a final varnish on it. The Gamsol can be used as soon as it's dry to the touch and you can't depress that thicker part of the paint where anything moves down. 
So the Gamsol could be used with this. Check one of our varnishing episodes. Anytime we're saying we're varnishing for oil means water mixable oils as well because it's what? Same thing. Same thing. Frida. Is the cure time on a water mixable oil any shorter? than on a traditional oil. Yes, we, we've been talking about that, that it, if it's going to dry 50% faster for underpainting, the finished painting is going to dry even faster as well, right? Because when they're, when they're changing that chemical composition of the oil or they're putting the emulsifier in, it's, it's got less oil per kind of area than a traditional oil is probably gonna have. Yeah. Yes, we're gonna get to I was like, D -d 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 hey, hey. <laughs> charades. He's <laughs> gesturing. Okay. All right. So as you got other questions, just go ahead and, and shoot them. While I'm gonna put these back here, so we don't have uh, any splash down. Okay. Would it theoretically be easier to fly with water mixable oils versus regular oils? Okay. The the problem is solvents, right? Yeah. Traditional oils don't necessarily have solvent in them. Traditional oils are just oil. Just because it's modified doesn't make it not flammable. Yeah. Okay. Now there might check with the airline because there might yeah. be there might be where you can take under a certain size tube if you're not carrying solvents or painting mediums with you that that would be okay. But um you know, it's it's because it's still a drying oil it is considered flammable, right? So I've I've heard of people getting it through airlines because it's water mixable and they have the MDS sheets and then other people not. So you definitely want to check with the airline that you're flying with. Okay, so what we're gonna do, I've got this little red base. Where did I, I had a pencil, there we go. Pencil! All right. Oh, this isn't our Centurion. Let's use the Centurion, not my board. All right. Katie, if you can zoom in on that, I'll see which. Okay. There, ta-da! Hopefully that'll work. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, we're just gonna do that. Here. All of the brands probably have some sort of smell, right? Um, modified, just like um, it's funny because this I was I've experienced this in the last week just with um, this is not being done true to size. I'm just putting something down here so we can do this. A just so you know. Um, the more refined an oil is, whether it's modified or not, because it's been heated, the kind of a little bit more smell it's gonna tend to have. People that are very, um, that tend to kind of react or be sensitive to smells or something like that. Um, if you have been sensitive to other oil paints in the past, probably water mixable oils you're going to be even more sensitive to because I think most of the brands had some smell to them, didn't they, Katie? Wasn't that kind of what we... Yeah. Uh, in, in some way, shape, or form. Now, that doesn't mean they were unpleasant or unworkable. There wasn't one where I was like, oh my gosh, get me out of here, and I'm incredibly sensitive to smell. Yeah. But it was where you knew when somebody, like if somebody walked in my office, they're like, what are you doing? You know, they could smell where they might not notice something unless I had solvents out otherwise. So um, so that would be the one thing that I would say is that people that tend to be more sensitive because when, with that oil being modified, it's again being processed, right? So the more processing, the more you're taking away kind of that natural clean scent. Think of olive oil, cold pressed, extra virgin, barely, but it has very limited smell, right? But you take something that's been more processed or a really cheap olive oil, and it is much stinkier, correct? All right, um, palette. I guess that would have been helpful to keep her little palette out. Um, that panel that you're using, it's been jessoed already, right? I'm using one of those Centurion linen panels. It's already primed. It's already primed, yes. Does the Lucas water mixable quick dry medium have a warning label of any sort on it? whether in regards to smells or... Unless it's toxic, there's not going to be a smell warning on, on um, labels, okay? Um, they both have the AP 
certification. So it's not CL. CL is what you're going to get with things that are flammable or have a flash point, you know, something like that, or have something in them that's known to cause cancer. So do these have a smell? Yes, the quick dry definitely has a stronger smell. It's not like a solventy smell, it's just a smell. Um, the regular oil is definitely not, does not have the smell to it. And like I said, I'm just gonna leave that there. Like I said, these are, you can, um, these dry so quickly that even if you use that regular oil to it, that's not gonna be a problem with, uh, with the, um, with adding some more kind of fat, if you will, to it, with it like taking years to dry. Now I will say, <laughs> and, and I don't have the piece anymore so that we can show it as a precaution, I will say that uh, on the, the Lucas page, I think there is a little sailboat that's called the, that shows, that says Blue Star on it. They had a water mixable stand oil. They may still have it. Um, I did that in the uh, Berlin uh, water mixable oils right after they were modified, like remodified. And um, they used to be, uh, when you added all, very much water at all, they would really separate and turn into this mess. They're, the formulation is fantastic on them now. Um, I used that stand oil to see how rich of a really thick kind of beautiful sheen that we could get to it and a year and a half later somebody still put a thumbprint in it because it just had not dried um, and it had been in my office here so it wasn't like it was not you know climate controlled so I don't know what the deal was with that but it was pretty good gross and there was no way to cover that like I could have probably put some more stand oil and some pigment over it um, and let it kind of settle back into it but God only knows how long it would have um, you know taken to finally dry and it had been scraped and scratched up because it had been in and out of photography so it just got went to the big painting in the sky yes that's a question face Frida what is the um, question the rinse water from water mixable oil paints, how would you safely dispose of that? I would keep a bucket outside that is up away from your animals that um, you can just do the dumping off and let the water evaporate, just like with acrylics. And then you can um, dispose of the bucket later, <coughs> if that makes sense. Can you paint over acrylics if you did your underpainting in acrylics? You could, yes. But again, you would want to use painting mediums then because that's going to be a slicker surface to actually make your paint adhere to that. Okay, so we're going to use the hog bristle brush first. I'm going to, first I'm going to show you with this wetted down, we've got both these two brushes. This just puffed up as soon as I wet it down. And then this just got like smoother and glossier and a finer line. Can you see the difference in that? Mm -hmm. Like it, it actually came to a point with this natural hair brush before. I can see it getting puffier and puffier and like sticking out more with that water because the water is soaking further and further into those bristles. I mean the brush has been used before, but there's a definite change in it and kind of the swelling of the bristles where this stays the same with that water. Okay, so that's why the natural brush isn't that great. All right, so I'm gonna take this, and without any medium, on this side we're gonna do water. On this side we're going to use medium, okay? So I'm gonna, since this is red, I'm gonna take this and we're gonna use this blue, and I'm really gonna sop it down, guys. Now, can you see how that pigment's kind of chopping up a little bit? It's not smooth, right? It'll go on and it's applying and I can feel it soaking into the gesso. But you can see kind of a little bit of a separation with the granules. I'm, I'm using the, um, it's ultramarine blue because it's more of a granulating kind of pigment so that you can see that a little bit easier. I've got that thinned way down more like you would be thinning um, you know watercolor or something like that all right so i'm gonna take a different brush 
Ah, eh, that wasn't a big one. We'll use this one with the. Yeah, we can use this one. Put a bunch right behind you if you want a bigger one. I'm going to put this in the fast dry medium and I'm going to pull some of that color off to the side and you will notice the fast dry medium makes it a little bit white. See how that color is much smoother? Even with watering it down as much, it's much more even. Can everybody see that difference? Mm -hmm. Okay. The feeling as it's going on, this feels like paint going on. It feels like oil paint that's got a glaze that's been thinned down. This feels gummy and kind of sticky and the parts where it's got these thicker bits are kind of scritchy scratchy and then the rest of it is like water just going on so which I, I know that sounds like the weirdest description in the world thank you Amy but that's uh, like the most like just off the top of my head technical description okay so see how see how with this medium and this brush this is, these are so nice in water mixables even with this great big brush on its side look at what detail I can get in these kind of tight areas it's already starting to soak into my palette and dry with the quick dry okay see how this is starting to get matte here already with that quick dry it's soaking in it's already starting to tack up this still has water on here some of it soaked in and is dry to the touch but I can pull this along here and I'm pulling up pigment where it is dry because only water is adhering that to it Okay, let me get some Soho wipes and wipe out the excess. Do we have other questions as we're going along? I'll talk about some of the benefits while I'm changing color here. Have you used the, um, the W medium that makes regular oils water mixable? Um, I have makes not, and, and with that being said, I think that Permalba is closing out their W oils. So whoever is asking that question uh, about that additive, they need to know that if that's something that's important to them, I don't know if they're going to continue making that just to keep going with their Permalba. They'll probably want to contact Weber about that. Um, because I did see the SKU notice, or the, uh, this, you know, we're, we're, we're closing stuff out, and it was from Weber themselves that were, uh, that were discontinuing it. It was not us discontinuing carrying it. Okay, see, see, I just cleaned that brush, and this is the other reason I used that blue. Blues tend to stain brushes. I don't know if you can see, I can see the particles in the brush. I've wiped out the excess, and then there's kind of, uh, on the bottom of that brush basin, there's kind of some little bumps, and I rubbed it along there to get as much debris out as I could. You always want to do this if you're going to change color or you're going to stop using this brush, especially with staining pigments. Clean the excess out and go ahead and clean it out with water of your brush. Then you're going to want to actually wash this later with, um, with soap. Okay. All right. Now, um, so the big benefit of this, even if it is, if you do find a, the smell a little annoying, it's still way safer than if you're using odorless mineral spirits which still off-gas harmless vapors, but you just can't smell them. So you have no idea that you're being subjected to them until it either you start having, you know, chronic bronchitis, you start having asthmatic symptoms, you start dealing with sinus infections, um, or with some people, it's one of those things where by the time it finally catches up to them, it's an all or nothing thing where they have just like a total, um, you know, neurological problems or things like that so even odorless mineral spirits can still give you problems um allergies people that have allergies that can cause shortness of breath things like that artists that have autoimmune disorders and asthma this is something that is probably going to be more beneficial to you guys <coughs> soap and water cleanup it's super easy you're just wiping the excess out 
Um, rinse changing color, like I just said. It dries faster. That was, we've discussed all of that. Um, the one thing is the thicker that paint's going, just like common sense, the thinner, the, or you know, the, the more your dry time is actually going to be. So consider that. Right now I'm actually using some of the oil medium with the color, just so you guys can see that. It's gonna have a really nice shine and it's definitely probably not gonna start, um, you know, getting as matte. And that's another way you can control this not being as matte is, is by adding some more oil. All right. So drawbacks, besides maybe some people find it a little bit stinky. Um, not all of the brands mix as well with water as others, okay? Um, just like Berlin reformulated theirs and it's really nice now. It was not before, and I have used other brands where it's been gummy and clumpy and slimy and it looks like you're trying to use oil mediums with an acrylic paint. Um, so that's something that is, you really need to, you know, once you've got a brand, kind of play with it, see how far you can thin it down, where it stays together nicely and kind of where you're gonna need to stop. Um, use water mixable mediums instead of the water if it's a problem that doesn't mean that anything's wrong with it it just means that it's a different formulation than another brand so that's something that can be considered a drawback um <coughs> adding a whole lot of water to water mixable oils can make colors look milky white um, if you're using a dark color especially let me see if, if uh i'm gonna make green in here on this one and i'm gonna use a lot of water and see if maybe this green will be can you explain to our viewers why it's not a good idea to mix acrylic mediums with a water mixable oil because they're not the same medium you're it's oil it, it breaks down to this is it called oil use oil mediums with it whether it's water mixable or not you need to use oil mediums with it. Is it acrylic? Because it's acrylic resin base, then you use acrylic mediums with it, right? It's it's just, that's, it's the long and short end of this. It, I, I understand that people want to be able to use what they've already got um, in the house because that makes it easier, but. And over you, time it will flake apart and essentially fall off the well, canvas. Well, it, it could even have problems. Can you guys see this real quick? See how that's kind of whiter in the in the middle? It's kind of a lighter green. Is that something where you guys can see that on your monitor? See how it's milkier kind of in the middle there? Mm -hmm. In that green? That's what I'm talking about, that it gets whiter with a whole lot of water added to it. Once that's dry, that goes back to the traditional color, okay? Um, you just, you don't want, you don't want to, to do that to yourself, um, you know? Why bother t taking the time? Even if you say, oh, well, but it's just for practice, what if it ends up being the nicest work you've ever done and somebody wants to buy it and you, you're, you're getting it packaged up and you, you're framing it and you put it down, you know, on a towel to kind of put the floater frame around it or whatever and you lift it up and half of your painting just is still there on the towel because it's flaked off just from that simple touch because you didn't follow proper painting practices. So water mixable doesn't equate acrylic. Okay, guys? totally different vehicle. All right, let's see. All right, um, different brands of, of water mixable oils, and we talk about this in JL41. Different brands of water mixable oils can be a little stickier, can be a little smoother, can be super creamy out of the tube, can be a little slippery under the brush out of the tube. So again, it's one of the things where the inconsistencies of brands can mess around a little. Consider um, that in inclement weather, this might not be the best plain air painting medium. You're out and you're doing plain air and it's, you know, there's a downburst from the clouds on your palette. It's a water mixable oil. It's with traditional oils, it's probably just gonna beat off and run off, right? What is it going to do with your water mixable oils? It is going to start thinning them out. So 
you know, might not necessarily be the best thing. Plus, if they dry 50% faster and you're thinning them anyway, you may have, it might be like almost akin to, um, to doing, you know, landscape work with acrylics where it's going to be drying for you. Okay, I'm just, okay, you can see this is, this is the thing. I'm going to paint this really thick here. This is just the paint right out of the tube. Compared to traditional oils, it's a little gummier to me than like if this if you were using the Lucas 1862. 1862 is a little smoother. That's that emulsifier that's in it. Once you either add just a touch of water or I just put a little tiny, just dab the end of the brush in the oil, that smooths out really easily and becomes very easily, um, very easy to brush on. Um, dries matte. If you're one of those people that likes shine, this is going to be the one thing that's going to annoy you about the medium is that it does dry matte for the most part. Uh, the more you thin that paint film, like you can see this, the blue with that, uh, you know, with our white little fast dry medium, it's already dry to the touch there, guys. I can do that. It's not coming up. It's got a slight bit of sheen to it, but for the most part, it's matte. Not quite as matte as just the water added only, but it's still matte. So it's something where if mattness bothers you, that's where you can control it with your varnishing, right? Or you can add that little bit of the modified linseed oil to it to give it a little bit more shine. We have other questions? As long as we're... Um. P. Cell Rose wants to know how you can get a smoother background with fewer brush strokes. Uh, you would add more oil, okay? It's just like glazing. You would add more oil to that. Anytime you're gonna, you want something to be a smoother color. And keep in mind too, these are hog bristle synthetics. Now this is water again, so you can see how much thinner it is. These are hog bristle synthetics. Anytime you're wanting to glaze, you're wanting that soft hair that's more like what a watercolor brush. So you're gonna to wanna to use like a synthetic Kalinsky to be doing that part of it. So that smoother, bigger, uh, you know, without the kind of the rougher edges that are interlocked like a hog bristle is going to give you that smoother. I can do it over here. Um, I'm gonna do it over here, but I'm gonna use that little bit of oil, guys, so you can see it. It's, uh, we're almost to the end of this episode. Again, I'm gonna urge people to use that JL41 uh, show as kind of uh, continuing education on this subject so that you've got a little bit more handle on. Um, I think we do some, I think that was the thing where we did the coffee cups, wasn't it, Katie? Yeah. Okay, so I took almost all of the, um, almost every brand. all the water mixables. I think we had the boat picture then still, um, so that uh, we didn't use a show a coffee cup thing. But they've seen the demo with Berlin here. Um, we used almost all of the water mixable paint so that you could see the difference with kind of using the same technique on the exact same size work. Okay, see how much easier this is, how much smoother this is with this being the oil, the water, mod the modified oil with a lot of oil and a little bit of pigment. Okay, it's, I, it's just glaze work. If you're wanting it to be that smooth where it's not showing those brush lines, which obviously if I was doing a background and I didn't want brush lines, I would need a bigger brush because the size four filbert is not really a large glazing brush. This would be more for detail. Yeah, but on that episode, that's gonna give you an idea of some different brands and kind of how they look um, in comparison to each other. And we talk about them all in depth. And I think I even say, okay, this brand was gummier than this brand, right? And this brand is a little smoother. Um, so definitely use that as your resource. If you go on that one and you've got 
questions after you view that episode, The Jail 41, come back to this episode on Facebook to leave those questions and tag Amy Gardner Dean in it so that it will flag me so I will know even after the fact that you got a question after reviewing this episode, after reviewing that episode. Um, so we'll be able to kind of know uh, that the question's there because I don't, uh, after a certain amount of time, I don't go back to the episodes looking for it for questions that people leave because at this point 92 episodes in I it's just me yeah. and I don't I don't have time to, to to keep checking them all every week so do those have a do those paints have a shelf life they're just like oil paints as long as you're keeping them closed <laughs> and decent they should be you know fine you're not leaving them out you're keeping it climate controlled you're not putting them out in the hot sunlight on your uh, you know your Windowsill? That's the word. Bravo. Um, before we go, just real quick, let's show them how to clean the brush. Okay. I think that that would be good. Um, and we'll use, this red one's pretty dirt. Well, no, nope, this one's pretty dirty because I've used it in a couple different. Do you want to just zoom in on that and I'll put my hand up? That's probably going to be the, the easiest. All right. So I'm going to use the Chelsea soap because that's just my preference and I don't have a problem with this being on my hands because it's non-toxic. So I've already gotten as much pigment out of this as I can, right? I've rinsed it. I've kind of put it against the little kind of batter things on the bottom and tried to kind of just open those bristles up to pull out the larger pigment particles. So I've got, I'm trying to determine where I'm at here. The brush is wet. I'm gonna put it right there in the middle. This works for even a brush with traditional oils where you've cleaned it out in your solvent because we all know solvents leave that kind of gummy, sticky stuff, right? And if you're using turpentine as your solvent for your brushes, that still will dry. So you want to get that out of your bristles. All right, I'm gonna put this back in my water and rinse that first kind of layer out. Look how much better that is just that little bit, okay? But that's not me, and that's not my insane brush hygiene. So we're gonna. That soap is fantastic. We're gonna kind of. What I'm doing is working that in. Now I would take my hand and I do this over the sink. At home, I've got a big wash sink. I'm gonna wander in. And I'm working that up. I'm not like scrubbing and damaging the bristles as I pull across. I'm pulling across in the way that the bristles actually would be going painting, okay? I'm just being firm about it. Working that up into that ferrule as high as I can. Look how much cleaner that is. That's the Chelsea soap? Uh-huh. Now, I mean, some of those pigments we used were staining, and this was a brand new brush, so it's going to have some staining because it's the first time the brush has been used, right? But for being getting as dark and gross as that was a minute ago, that got that out pretty well, didn't it? Now, say you've been scrubbing at this a while and it didn't get it out. What I want you to do is give it three times the college try and then work that soap up into the brush and let it set overnight. Okay, let it sit. It's not gonna hurt your brush. Wash it out in the morning or wash it out in 24 hours. I've taken actually brushes that were oil brushes where I left them and set them and forgot them. You're telling them to leave the soap in it, not leave, leave them in the water. No, 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 no. Never, ever, ever. She got the Sorry, thank you, Katie. <laughs> oh my God, you're scaring me. No, don't leave it in the water. Work that soap into the brush, let it set. 12 hours, 24 hours, however long. Even if the soap dries in there, it's gonna come out as soon as you wet it. It's not gonna kill it to have the soap in it. Go back and rinse it out really well. When you rinse it out in the sink too, I've got the bucket here. I rinse all the soap off my hand and I keep doing this to get all that soap residue out of the brush, okay? Yes, Amanda. Um, <coughs> that bar happened to come with a tin to store it in? No. For mm -mm. travel, okay. And also, nope. can you use it for water mixable oils, acrylic, and everything as long as you rinse it It completely? is a brush cleaner. Brush cleaning 
whatever type yeah. you need. Yes, it works on everything. I would say if you're using oils or acrylics, or whatever, whatever you use, don't leave your soap like this mm -hmm. before you use it on another medium brush. I mean, that's fine if it's oils. Go back and actually just rinse the soap, kind of wipe it off. I mean, that's getting out. Now, I know you shouldn't mix your brushes between, say, oils <laughs> and acrylics. What about oils and water mixable oils? We just, if you've got synthetics for your regular traditional oils, feel free to use them with your water mixables. But like we talked about, the natural brushes don't perform very well, um, especially the hog bristle brushes because they go and uh, with the water mixable oils, because you're not using water if you're painting with regular oil, right? You're not going over to water, dipping your oil brush in water before you start painting. That's why usually people that paint in oils always let their brush dry that they've washed, right? First, because they know that that brush is gonna be kind of unwieldy and hard to use otherwise. So yes, as long as you've got synthetic oil brushes, feel free to use them with your water mixable oils if you're trying to switch to that. Okay, that was that one that was really red. Ooh, uh, well, that's, I love that soap. Mm -hmm. it, it just, I mean, it, it works really nicely. All right, any other questions? We about done? All right, well, thank you guys for watching again. I'm gonna reiterate, JL41. Good knowledge if this is something that you're interested in and you're wanting to learn more about it. Link me with the questions. Make sure you put Amy Gardner Dean so that I know and can respond. Okay, guys. What's next week? Next week is, I think, colored pencils. Again, our colored like pencil that? techniques. No, I'm pretty that. sure it is. <laughs> yeah, because I brought the stuff and set it aside on our stand of the, all the shows that's stand off to of the side. Shows. The stand of many shows and supplies. So yeah, so that's. Uh, that's next week, so we'll be using the new Cezanne colored pencils with that. All right, well, thanks, guys, for watching. We'll see you next week.